You know what? Frankly, it's a new era. I'm done talking about Marvel movies. I don't want to talk about another video game. We're a book channel now. So I didn't finish reading it. I was too busy with other things like making Let's Plays. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome back to your everyday nerd. I'm your host, Zack Snyder. If you're new around here on Yen, we pull from every corner in nerd culture and talk about anything and everything that piques my interest. No, don't worry. I'm not done with Marvel movies. I'm not done with video games. I do want to talk about books though. So today we're going to talk about a few books that I read in the past like two years. I find some of them to be quite good. I find one of them to be okay, and I don't have any bad books because I have immaculate taste. Never have I ever watched or played or read anything that was trash. I simply only enjoy good things. You seen my criteria on Blu-rays yet? I haven't watched like any of those. I've seen like two of them. So, you know, that's cool. Anyways. What do we got on the docket? About a year and a half ago, I picked up a little book called Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. This is a book that I actually read in high school. I had an AP literature class. I enjoyed it. It was one of my favorite classes in high school. This is one of the books that I got really, really close to finishing it. And then it was like this much left, but the class was moving on to the next book and I didn't have enough time to read it. So I didn't finish reading it. I was too busy with other things like making Let's Plays. Oh man, it's been such a long time since I've done this. Hold on. I actually hate the fishing part. Because it can take so long. So how about this weather out here? There we go. Oh man, I had it. Anyways, Slaughterhouse 5 is about a guy named Billy Dresden. He was in World War II, and years later, he ends up having PTSD. But what's interesting about this book is rather than just telling your traditional anti war story, you know, guy goes to war, things happen, people die around him, he goes home, life kind of sucks. This is an anti war book that mixes some sci fi elements and some satire and some humor into the mix. And that's what I really like about it. At one point, Billy is in current day and he's kind of talking to some people or he's doing some things. And then the next minute he gets what's called displaced in time. And he basically gets all the way sent back to World War II as if that was the next thing that was happening in his life at that current moment. It's like a time travel story without the actual time travel. Plus there's aliens. There's these guys named the Tralfamadorians who are these five dimensional beings. So they see time like we see like a piece of paper. It's a really cool concept. It's really weird and trippy. And I think that's what I like about this book the most is it's not afraid to get weird. It's not afraid to get trippy. And there's a lot of humor. There's a lot of moments that had me bust in a gut. I quite enjoyed it. I definitely recommend it for a book I read in high school and almost didn't finish. I'm glad I finally got a chance to finish it. I'm giving this one a 10 out of 10. It's a good book. Go read it. It is so short and jumbled and jangled, Sam, because there is nothing intelligent to say about a massacre. Everybody is supposed to be dead, to never say anything or want anything ever again. Everything is supposed to be very quiet after a massacre, but it always is, except for the birds. What do the birds say? All there is to say about a massacre. Things like, who tea we? Next up on our book extravaganza, we have Artemis Fowl by Aeon Colfer, a book that I read because they were making a movie adaptation about it. That movie was so bad that I don't even know how to make a video about it. It was incomprehensibly, it was incomprehensible. The book, the movie made no sense even after reading the book. Anyways, the book though is about this 12 year old criminal mastermind. His dad's missing, but they live in this world of fairies and dwarfs and Artemis Fowl is the one that kind of uncovers that. He kind of finds out that there are these fairies and dwarfs existing in the real world. That's the biggest problem with reviewing this is this is for middle school kids. I remember in middle school, I read a lot of a series called Warriors, which was about cats. I got it right here. 
all-time goaded series quite enjoyed this but i had a friend of mine that recommended me that and then he recommended me this and i read the first 30 pages and i was bored as an adult it's not as boring i feel like it's okay i just i didn't like the pacing it almost read like a graphic novel or a movie which means it should have been faster paced but it wasn't for some reason like everything that happens in this 270 page book felt like it could have been accomplished in 50 pages that's that's where i'm sitting this book is like a two and a half out of five closer to a three than a than a one and a half like it's not bad i have like three other books right there and so i might decide to finish reading the series and rewatch the movie make a video at some point but i don't know if it's worth it i don't know if i care enough let me know if you've ever read artemis fowl you think that's worth doing there you go next up on the list we've got a book that makes you uncomfortable to say the least it's vladimir nabokov's lolita this book is really good it's also pretty scary uh if you don't know anything about lolita it is about a man named Humbert Humbert, who's a, 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 a pedophile. There's no way of getting around it. He is a self-proclaimed pedophile. Throughout the book, he tries to tell you that everything he's doing is A-OK. -okay. It's not A-OK. -okay. Little spoiler alert. It's not OK. So throughout the book, you're in the perspective, you're in the head of this man as he meets this woman who has a 12 year old daughter. I think she's 12 or 13. And we get to hear about his desires and his his plans to like be with this child. And it is disturbing. I would read like a chapter that was like three pages long and I'd be like, well, that's enough for today. I'm gonna set it down. We'll come back to that later when I'm done throwing up. I say all of this, the book is not inherently sexual, which is surprising. This is a beautifully written book. Nobokov is a prolific writer from Russia, but he speaks like three or four languages fluently. So he's constantly inserting French phrases or Latin phrases. And I have no idea what's happening in those moments. You can look online, there's annotated versions to find out the meanings of these French or Latin phrases. But it's the, it's the English prose too. I mean, this is mostly an English written book and he just has these beautiful drawn out sentences and you're like, man, I wish he was talking about something a little better, but he's not. That's unfortunate. This book just baffled. Like if Artemis Fowl the movie baffled me because it was so bad, this baffled me because it's about a subject matter that is taboo. It's about a subject matter that is pretty ubiquitous as to who is in the right and who is in the wrong here. And, and yet it is the most beautifully written book I've ever read. And that just blows my mind. I definitely want to do a full video about this book and the movie, the Stanley Kubrick adaptation. I watched that recently too. It's good, but in different ways. I don't think it properly adapts the book well, but that's probably for the best if I'm being honest. Anyways, this, this is a five stars it's 10 out of 10 hard to recommend because of the subject matter but if you can get through it it's a mind melding novel and i i guess i recommend but again only if you can stomach it when i try to analyze my own cravings motives actions and so forth i surrender to a sort of retrospective imagination which feeds the analytic faculty with boundless alternatives which causes each visualized route to fork and refork without end in the maddeningly complex prospect of my past. But last up on the list, we have the big boys. I have finally read The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. I read The Hobbit first and I've seen the movies. So I'm really excited to talk about them all in length as someone who's heard about them, but have never watched them or read them until recently. Starting with The Hobbit, Tolkien wrote this and then decided later on to kind of expand the world of Middle Earth. And I think that's what's really cool about this is it is a prequel, yes, to The Lord of the Rings, but it's its own standalone story. I could have read this and been fully satiated. I, and that's what's really amazing to me. The Hobbit is about a guy named Bilbo Baggins. He is a hobbit, he lives in a hole. That's the first sentence, which is honestly, most people know about this, but I, I really like that first line in this book. In a hole in the ground, there lived a hobbit. 
Not a nasty, dirty, wet hole filled with the ends of worms and an oozy smell, nor yet a dry, bare, sandy hole with nothing in it to sit down on or to eat. It was a hobbit hole, and that means comfort. Like, that's just, that's just so damn cozy. And that's what this book is. It is like reading a modern day fairy tale. And yet, it still is approachable as an adult. The story is about Bilbo Baggins, who as a hobbit doesn't like risk. But this particular day, Gandalf and these 12 dwarfs come to his house. And they're like, we need your help. We're going to go up to this mountain. There's a dragon there. Don't worry about it. But we need to get this thing out of this mountain. And Bilbo at first is very against it. He doesn't want to go. But eventually he comes around on it. And they go on, on this adventure. And that's the story. It's very episodic. Every other chapter is Bilbo and the gang going through this one creepy area with this new antagonist or enemy. And it's really cool. I feel like this could be like a Saturday morning cartoon. And sure, at first it can be a little bit repetitive, but I kind of like that about it. A lot of people complain about Tolkien's writing style. They say it's dry or bland or it can be too descriptive. And I kind of agree with some of that when it comes to Lord of the Rings. But The Hobbit is just, it's perfectly written. Like there's, there's nothing wrong with it. I absolutely recommend this. If you're three or if you're 99, absolutely read this. And now we got the big three. The Lord of the Rings, which is broken up into three books, which they then made three films about it. Again, full video coming at some point in the future. But these books are epic. They are <laughs> so epic and from from the very beginning you're automatically brought back into the world of middle earth you're revisiting bilbo everything is kind of coming together and then you realize oh there was this ring that was mentioned in the hobbit it's actually important it is the most important thing in this world right now and we're gonna go on an adventure with it from that get-go you're like yeah let's see what ha what's gonna happen with this ring we're introduced to the fellowship when we go out into the wilderness, there's a little bit of episodic nature in Fellowship of the Ring coming off of The Hobbit I appreciate. This might actually be my favorite of the three books for that reason. Later on, when you get to the two towers, everything gets a little bit too muddied for me. There are a lot of new characters that are kind of brought in. You don't realize their importance until much later. Tolkien also, some of his writing of particular characters I wished were were more built out. Sure, at the end of Return of the King, there's like a 100 pages of appendixes. So if you want to read the history of this book, you can, but that's not me. I would much rather have our characters be fully fleshed out throughout the story. But that's my only nitpick with Tolkien's trilogy here is that there are certain characters that just aren't characters. They are simply plot devices or meant to be like the wife of this character. And, and that kind of sucks. Also, it's weird because I remember hearing so many people love Aragorn and I didn't get it until the movies because while Aragorn is an important character in these books, I like him the most in the first book. He's a ranger and he's kind of got like this mysterious shroud about him. But once you find out what his main purpose is, the mystery kind of goes away from it and it becomes almost like this internal character struggle that you don't quite understand yet. I don't know. I wished I liked Aragorn more in the books. I like him a lot more in the movies, but that was, that was kind of the major difference between the books and the movies for me was his character. Other than that, fantastic trilogy. I wish I could sit here for the next hour and talk about them, but I'm going to be doing that for a future video and I actually want to script that so that I'm not rambling on like I have for this entire video. But obviously I recommend Lord of the Rings, I recommend The Hobbit, I recommend all the books I talked about today except for Artemis Fowl. That book is fine. But let me know, do you want to see me talk about more books? If so, which books? I have a lot of books that I want to read at some point in the future. Some of them could make their own videos. Others could be more videos like this. Let me know down in the comments. Hit the subscribe button. We're almost at a thousand subscribers. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.